অন্য প্লিজ স্টার্ট রেকর্ডিং অন্য প্লিজ স্টার্ট রেকর্ডিং গুগল মিট রেকর্ডিং স্টার্ট করো Excuse me, madam. Yes. Uh, uh, shall I try <clears throat> if my presentation will be uh, visual? Otherwise, yes, sir. Uh, sir, I may need to a... change the device. Can you can, just uh... give it a try, sir? You can just give yeah. it a try right now. Uh, we'll right. just uh, see if it is working or not. Sure. All right. <clears throat> Start, Koro. Sir, one second, Dara. Professor Alexander, one second, after test screen testing, what the size is? Two minutes, show my size. Only after device test, what the size is? Screen is asked, okay? Is my sharing button is now active? Uh, sir, that, uh, it will not be visible to us, but uh, if you start sharing, we shall be able to observe from the screen. Uh, sir, you just click on uh, present screen. Yeah, but it says entire screen. Yes, and, so uh, then you click on the particular click on the particular folder or the particular slide that you have in mind. Uh, I don't have it on that screen. That's an issue. I only uh, see the screen which is uh, the current meeting screen. All right. Okay. Let me try some other option here. No. Okay. Anything you can see on your screen? Uh, not right now, sir. About not right now. now. We can just see your profile pic, but if you start presenting, it will be visible on the screen. I'm already presenting. That's a problem. Uh, no, 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 sir. Not as yet. Then it's something is not right with my video or with uh, my button is it <clears throat> uh, can you do me a favor like yeah, if sir. there is uh, uh, okay because at this point in time my present button is inactive okay. uh, is it possible for the host of this particular meeting to make it active uh, sir, uh, present button is active for all the uh, participants. We are requesting the participants to switch it off. That's all. So, okay. sir, if you if you wish, you may just uh, send that in the form of a folder to the email ID of uh, the person who is uh, right now looking after the technical issues. He will just present it for you while you will be speaking. So, I think that will be easier for you, sir. Uh, no, it actually won't. Uh, okay, let me try leaving the meeting and try uh, signing in with the different device. All right. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. okay. okay sir. Okay.
আমি কি করব এখন কিছু করতে হবে উনি লিভ করেছেন মানে গেস্ট লিভ করেছেন তিনি কি করবে উনি আবার টাইপ করুন আদার ডিভাইস ট্রাই করুন এখন আমি তাহলে কিছু করছি না তাহলে ঠিক আছে কিছু করতে হবে না এখন উনি আসলে স্টার্ট করে দাও বলবো স্লাইড চেঞ্জ অফ শিডিউল বলে শুরু করে দেব তখন বলে দেবে ডাক্তার a different name so we could not really understand i am ready i am ready just to your principal my call to me i am ready okay 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 sir okay sir i'll just get back to my principal yeah. sir hello hello ha uh-huh, sir dr murugavel is absolutely ready so ready? yes he is here sir with he is here uh, dr anbalagan pandian with different name yes sir he is absolutely ready So what should we do? Should we start? No, inform uh, uh, Alexander sir. Alexander sir is not, Alexander sir has not yet mm-hmm. signed in. Now watch telephone, inform him that you are the second speaker now. No, no, it is all right. He, he won't mind. He was the second speaker as it is. Okay. Okay, we'll start. You can start. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. I'm starting. uh so it is a very good afternoon to all our participants to our honored guests to our students to our own teachers to the members of the faculty of physical education of the various departments as well as from the other departments it's a very good afternoon on behalf of kopotanga hindu college today we are going to have an international webinar we excuse ourselves initially first because we have delayed by more than 16 minutes and it is not due to us but due to a technical problem that some of our speakers have been facing uh, at the very outset therefore with all our due apologies we wish to start off immediately there is a slight change in the schedule professor k murugavel will be the first speaker of the day and he will be followed by dr alexander krushchilov and thereafter maybe by dr gurmeet singh kapoor so just to start off i will give a brief introduction and then i will hand it over to our principal dr h k mondor physical exercise as the name suggests is invariably linked to the physique that is the body like a machine that requires to be looked after the body too requires care and regular nurture for it to perform well today our concern is not just the body and it's just a post condition when it comes to maintenance of good health but the mind and mental health of students as well without which survival is almost an impossible adventure 
especially during the COVID-19 period. For this webinar, we have eminent speakers from India as well as around the world. And for now, I would request Dr. H.K. Mondol, our principal, to make the formal note of welcome for all our honored guests. Sir, it is over to you. So good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Today we are here for an international webinar. The topic, as she said, introducing new concepts in physical exercise to improve mental health of the students, particularly during COVID-19 pandemic situation. To this webinar, international webinar, on behalf of Govardhana Hindu College, on behalf of Department of Physical Education, and on my personal behalf, I like to welcome you all. First of all, I like to welcome Dr. K. Muru Gavel, who is appeared here in different name, I think. Dr. K. Muru Gavel is Lord Muru. Is nothing. Welcome. He is the director of Arthiyar University, Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. I like to welcome Dr. Alexander Kassilisikov from University of Saints, University of Malaysia. He is the professor. Physical Exercise and Sports Science Program, School of Health Science, University of Science, Malaysia. I'd like to welcome you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And i like to welcome Dr. Gurmit Singh Kapoor. I think he has not yet joined, but shortly he will join from the University of Punjab. He is the chairperson, Department of Physical Education. At the same time, I'd like to welcome all the participants who have already joined and going to be going to join shortly. At this critical moment of COVID-19 pandemic situation, normal activities of the people particularly of the students are either closed or not in normal pace. Are either closed or not in normal pace. This webinar is mainly focused on the issues related to mental health of the young generation, primarily the students of colleges and universities. These young adults are suddenly detached from their normal campus atmosphere. They are detached from their classmates, their teachers, their friends, as their educational institutions are temporarily closed at this moment. They are missing their campus atmosphere and they have started thinking that not only the not only their study but also their future career is totally uncertain at this moment this is their present mental condition this situation leads them to a state of anxiety and depression to give them some relief to rescue them from this critical situation how physical exercise be helpful. This is the main objectives of this webinar. So today's discussion is focused on the rescue measures for the 
students who are suffering from some critical problems like anxiety, depression, etc., etc. We know physical exercise not only changes our body, it improves our mind and also thereby our attitude and mood. Exercise should be regarded as tribute to the heart. We know good things come to those who sweat. As an Arabian proverb, he who has help has hope, and he who has hope has everything. Mahatma Gandhi said it is the help that is real oil and not pieces of gold and silver. Famous politician and erstwhile American President Barack Obama said, you have to exercise or at some time you will just break down. Thomas Edison said that doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will involve the patient in the proper use of food, fresh air and exercise. So, any exercise is always better than no exercise. Exercise can improve mental health by reducing anxiety, depression, and negative mood, and by improving self-esteem also. Exercise has also been found to alleviate symptoms such as low self-esteem and social withdrawal. Any kind of exercise like jogging, swimming, cycling, walking, gardening, etc., can give you this result. These are the Arabia, Arab, Arabic exercise, I think, the physical education personnel will know better definitely. In short, health benefit, including mental health, so regular exercise can be summarized as follows in short. Improved sleep, better endurance, stress relief, improvement in mood, increased energy and stamina, increased mental alertness, weight reduction for the persons with obesity, Reduce cholesterol, improved cardiovascular fitness, and reduce depressive symptoms. This is true for Arabic as well as non Arabic exercise also. So now, question is how much exercise needed for whom? Number two, what is the most suitable time for these exercises? And what are the restrictions and other cautions to be maintained to have good effect of this exercise? And so many questions are there. I hope all the answers will be available through the discussions of our eminent speakers. Altogether, today's webinar will definitely be successful and the benefits will ultimately go to the young adults for whom this webinar is organized. So once again, I like to welcome you, sir. I like to, I like to welcome all the participants. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Uh, right now, sir, we have Dr. Alexander back with us. So should we start off with him because he has been here before 3 p.m.? You asked uh, consent. Uh, Dr. Alexander, should we start with you? If you agree, sir, shall we start with you? Thank you, madam. I have no problem with that. If uh, okay, that is required, I'm ready. Okay, sir, please do. Sir, before you do, sir, I have to make a formal announcement, sir. Please give me a minute. Sure.
with a slight change of schedule, our first speaker for today is Dr. Alexander Krashil Shikov. He is a professor at the School of Health Sciences, University Science, Malaysia. He is an expert in his field in the exercise, sports, and science programs. And he will be talking to us, and we hope to learn a lot from him. Sir, it's over to you. Thank you, madam. Uh, I'm now trying to uh, share the screen. Uh, all right, I can see some, but uh, just give me a minute. And uh, first of all, I would like to uh, express my sincere gratitude to uh, the principal of Garabanga Hindu College, uh, Professor Hare Krishna Mandal, for inviting me to uh, give that talk in such a in front of a, uh, such an eminent gathering. And uh, thank you for inviting me, uh, right to to present. And uh, actually, the topic of uh, my today's presentation. Okay, let me try sharing. I mean, somehow it shows the beautiful brochure of yours, but it does not show my actual presentation. All right. Uh, let me try again. So, uh, uh, so we could see your presentation, sir. We could see it initially. Okay, I think you can see it now. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it's visible, sir. All right. all right. Thank you so much again. So, uh, what I'm about to present today is actually about health and exercise during the lockdown and after. Uh, see, uh, everyone these days is talking about the. Uh, nor, I mean, the new normal, all right? And they call the pandemic uh, situation and lockdown. Uh, in India, it is known as lockdown. In Malaysia, it is known as movement control order, MCO. And everyone calls it new normal. I beg to disagree. I don't consider it normal, all right? And I won't. And I actually encourage everyone not to. It is not normal. It is a situation we have to deal with, and it is a situation we have to kind of cope with. But to call it a new normal, I will not. So for that very reason, uh, I would rather suggest that we are talking about health and exercise during lockdown and after lockdown. So I'm just uh, thinking of owning my timer, so I'm actually sticking to uh, 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 a particular proper timing. So, and that is why my presentation is just during and after. So, with uh, your permission, when we are talking in the, about the situation uh, during the lockdown and what we are facing now, and as it is rightly said in your brochure, which is nicely presented and uh, worded, we do have issues related to mental uh, conditioning. We have issues related to physical conditioning. Those are interrelated, of course. And who not uh, knows about it better than India with the huge and uh, centuries long traditions of yoga, meditation, and uh, health related issues of yoga and other practices. So for that very reason, uh, and as again suggested in your team of the conference, mental health is important. So with all those changes and uncertainty in life at this particular moment, taking care of mental health has never been more important. And uh, there are several benefits associated with positive mental well-being, which include actually reduced stress and anxiety. And as it was rightly mentioned by Principal Professor Hare Krishna Mandal, Improved moods and clearer thinking, then a greater sense, of course, of calm and increased self-esteem, and improved relationships as well. But not only that. So for some people, talking about mental issues or mental health can be difficult. And uh, I will honestly tell you, I was checking internet for uh, like pictures and and uh, GIFs and uh, you know other 
media related to mental health. And honestly, after Googling that, the choice of uh, pictures or the choice of GIFs was in a way surprising. And to some extent, even astonishing. I will just show you one today. I, I won't dare to show you more than one. So, uh, but it will actually uh, have to be done. If there are mental issues or mental health needs, we need to talk about it, particularly in the lockdown situation. So, although this can seem kind of challenging at first, but it is important to understand all needs, all right? And it, as it is important, the first step towards managing uh, a, a mental health and stress. And of course, stress is uh, mounting. Uh, inactivity is mounting. It was rightly mentioned that students are missing their uh, uh, campuses. We lecturers also miss our students, although we keep teaching online since uh, March uh, 15th, fully online. But see, we are lucky one way in my university that we have been prepared for that. Of course, we were not prepared for the pandemic, but uh, our e-learning or online uh, e-learning system was kind of fully functional. The issue was that just lecturers who were not yet uh, involved in that teaching online were supposed to kind of learn in turbo regime to actually master all those stuff. So, and uh, of course, those elements of mental health uh, worth considering uh, as you try right to understand your mental health needs. So the need is important. See, when we talk about exercise prescription, we typically uh, talk in three categories, needs, wants, and lifestyle. So needs is something which you have to figure out first. So what are those needs and how it could actually be uh, established? So you need, or, or actually I'm talking about students, the people who are in the lockdown or suffering from that, needs to ask some questions like to, to yourself, all right? And among those questions that several are here, have you been more Hello? Okay, someone's mic went on. Uh, have you been more irritable with situations or people around you? Have you been less interested in activities you usually like? Have you found it difficult to concentrate? Have you been sleeping more or less than usual? Have you ch changed the routines uh, uh, and that had impact on your sleep? Have you been eating more or less than usual? Have you felt overwhelmed and uh, like there is too much to do? Have you felt concerned about the future? What aspects specifically? And uh, this particular question is realistically serious. All the previous ones are more like a common, more like a routine ones, but that about future is realistically serious. No one knows. How many universities may survive the lockdown? How many may not? Now, universities, including mine in Malaysia, are realistically facing budget cuts, realistically facing problems. And uh, that's a realistic uh, uh, concern of the staff, both academic and non-academic, how it will go on. On the other hand, surprisingly or not, it opens some new opportunities. Never before we were thinking of having online uh, presentations or conferences on that scale we have now. And the one which you are conducting now is an example to that. Now, have we asked ourselves a question at least once in a lifetime? Hey, how does it matter where you are? Where is your university located geographically? It used to be important, but now it may not be. Because now you can present from your place, wherever it is, to anywhere. And you can be at two, three places at the same day presenting different ends of the world. Like I have another meeting today. Uh, all the way also in India, in the state of Gujarat, where I'm consulting one of the four academies. Although it's a bit clashing, but maybe it is even better than I'm presenting first here now. So there are issues of future. And then <clears throat> continuing with that, have you been able to get enough time for yourself to relax? So, you know, being a couch potato doesn't count, all right? So what sort of activities usually help you reset when you are not feeling yourself and you been able to do them. So if you ask yourself honestly those questions and uh, uh, kind of concerns, they, they eventually are becoming even easier to actually master when you do that structured kind of classification of your needs. All right. Now, uh, the mindfulness is a term which uh, 
actually appeared in uh, many sources, internet and published resources. What is it mindfulness, all right? So obviously mindfulness is a practice that is beneficial no matter what's going on in the world. If things seem a little stressful at the moment and you are finding it hard to focus, it could be the ideal remedy. But then again, how to do that, what is it? So if you put it simply, being mindful is the act of being fully present and aware of where you are and what, you, what is it you are doing. It's something that all people can do, although few of us take the time to actually spend doing it. So and that what we were doing this five minutes ago and again kind of figuring out, do we realistically need some kind of interventions, mental health life? How is it? What is it the condition of ours? What's the state of our mind? So, however, uh, even, even if you don't do that, like say, a few, few decades ago, the term wellness was uh, uh, kind of weird. Not many people were able to explain what is that. But say mindfulness is something kind of uh, uh, a relative, I guess, a second or third cousin to to kind of wellness, but of course related to mind. And uh, actually can be a great first step in discovering how to stay healthy during the lockdown. So uh, exercises, practicing actually, or exercising mindfulness can help to reduce strength and anxiety, improve your memory and help with concentration. And actually maintaining a mindful life uh, can benefit your emotional health, relationships, and communication skills now and in the future. A great place to start with mindfulness is with some basic breathing exercises. See, I mentioned yoga today already, and uh, of course I'm not going to uh, 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 discuss any yoga issues, so I, I'm perfectly sure you can do that better. So, but breathing is, is one of the uh, skills which could help a lot. And of course, it is also kind of can be part of yoga exercises, can be part of the mindful exercise, meditation, that stuff which actually helps. And it is very uh, uh, particular about like nose breathing, about mouth breathing, about diaphragmic breathing and then the other stuff. So uh, there would be, of course, different uh, shapes and forms of it, but some breathing exercises will be definitely helpful and uh, just about to give you one example it's just a uh, quick and uh, but at the same time very uh, uh, like uh, useful practice it's presented here in the, in the slide known as deep breathing the 478 approach what is 478 the four is actually the time for inhalation four seconds here seven seconds is a, to hold the breath and eventually eight seconds is to breathe out. And again, uh, they're repeating that cycle, if, 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 even if you repeat it three to four times. And uh, of course, if you exercise the nose breathing during that, and of course, uh, you can go uh, adding that here or there. So that typically is one of the uh, useful exercises, which can be actually practiced without uh, much of familiarization and with Anyone can do it in any, uh, you know, uh, conditions or any uh, environment. Uh, stay connected. That is another uh, point which has to be observed, particularly in the lockdown, because it's really tough. Uh, I can tell you that I was teaching, for instance, this semester in two courses. One was uh, the third year student uh, coaching science and performance analysis. 23 students about, and then a small group of master students, uh, which uh, the course was uh, uh, principle and practices of training methodology. And, you know, the seeing students online and them communicating with each other, even sitting all kind of in one group, although online was itself an event for them. And you can imagine they were all locked in the, uh, in the campus, in the dorm. In Malaysia, it was uh, quite for a while, the interstate uh, connection was interrupted. They could not travel, they could not go home. And staying connected was really a, a, an issue. And uh, it is not that way now, because Malaysia luckily is now in the green zone. There are very few cases new, there are a few, very few active cases, but still 
uh, the battle is not over. So what is it? Call your friends and family. Try and arrange to speak with different people throughout the week. It can give you some something to look forward and keep your feelings social. Arrange the online activity, whatever it is. There are plenty of apps and services that let multiple people uh, voice and video chat together. You can do can do things like having a, a mystery, a murder mystery party or set up a pub, 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 pub quiz. Yeah, pub may not be a problem. I mean, an issue with like a public quiz, I think. And uh, quizzes, actually, we did a lot uh, during uh, the, the lockdown online while teaching, because perhaps, as you know, and most of it was happening with your students as well, we were actually, we had actually to replace the course, or the, the exam work with coursework. And everything is, uh, this particular semester was based on coursework. So if it was 60, 40 or something, so we had eventually and immediately to convert 60% of like uh, exam time or exam work into coursework. And uh, that was quizzes, that was something, and it was a little bit of fun as well. Send messages. Try reaching out to some people you have not spoken within a while. Even uh, if, like send a message or say hi, that can also help. Uh, now that was one of the uh, uh, GIF, which I uh, downloaded from the net, I, I warned you actually a few minutes ago that you know the moment you google mental uh, health or mental issues google gives you some weird uh, 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 pictures or gis it, it's actually very artistic but it reflects the, the mental issues uh, which we have to kind of battle uh, uh, of course again related to covid so uh, try to keep busy now it's a perfect time to explore your hobbies, find some new hobbies, challenge yourself to read the book you've been putting off, start some journal you always wanted to keep. And there was a very good saying on the, on the internet that if you are walking out of that lockdown without new skills you learn, without improved physical fitness, and without like uh, uh, something new you've learned, that means that you wasted your time. So it actually gives a unique opportunity and it is also a psychological issue of how to look at it from which angle. So why am looking at it negatively? Look at it positively. In fact, to me, it was fun and it was actually a, a really a satisfaction to learn that e-learn platform. You know, there, there are huge opportunities. They are creating quizzes, creating assignments, assessments, yeah, the, 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 the software is absolutely user-friendly, and it was actually exciting. And I could publish a few papers, I could sit and do some things which were pending quite for a while. So uh, lockdown is not only the negative thing, it also helps you a bit. Now, get enough sleep. I specifically placed that picture here, and uh, see, when you say get enough sleep, and uh, uh, specifically, I put someone with the, with the device in here. Devices are actually interrupting your sleep. And we do have examples from sport or high performance sport. In fact, uh, elite, elite athletes, uh, particularly junior ones, they are so kind of dependent on, on their uh, gadget that they sometimes feel, you know, de deprived or depressed when, when you kind of not let them do that. But on the other hand, we also have to understand that situation is different, that gadgets are disrupting sleep. And many people are actually thinking wrong about it. They say, oh, okay, how does it matter? When do I sleep? I have nothing to do. I stay home or in the dorm. I have nowhere to go. So if I don't sleep at night, I can sleep at the daytime. Which is actually not a good idea. And of course, uh, that is also involving different cultures, differ for that matter. But again, it is also true about uh, uh, staying late at night or, or, or having alcohol, which actually has to be avoided for the best of the health. So it's actually a, a, a quite a psychological issue. So stay physically active. So the hardest part about being active during lockdown is starting the first, in the first place to begin with. Because it's kind of realistically uh, uh, tough when you say, okay, gym is not there, company is not there, I'm all alone. Use video, use YouTube, 
traffic is heavy though, but even say sometimes overloaded and uh, the connectivity may not be that good, but it is still a thing to begin with. And I put here some few recommendations, I'm sure. Uh, Professor Gurmit Singh will uh, cover on that more when he arrives, I'm sure he will. So, uh, in fact, the recommendations are to at least 150 minutes of moderate uh, intensity activity per week. All right. It is uh, not just that. Uh, it is also a provision that if you don't have enough time to have that 150 minutes, 75 minutes of vigorous activity is good, is good enough. It is actually equally good. However, please remember that if you or your clients or your students are getting into vigorous physical activities, they need to be uh, uh, to go through pre-exercise health screening to make sure they are healthy enough. So, uh, what is the type of activities? Anything. Cycling, of course, it is not an issue now. Uh, jogging is not an issue now. However, I know that uh, the MCO, like movement control order lockdown issues are a bit relaxed now. So you can perhaps advise uh, using the public places or parks. However, I specifically prepared one or two slides here to share with you the benefits of circuit training, and particularly circuit training with own body weight. All right, so gyms are not allowed, gyms are not available, so circuit training becomes a brilliant idea for actually lockdown activity. So those are the listed exercises uh, with the own body weight, it could be push-ups, planks, uh, planks are very good for core body muscles, for posture, and at the right there is a simple circuit training workout with body weight for, for kind of more or less the beginners, squat jumps, 30 seconds duration of the activity, a rest between the stations, 60 seconds, rest between circuits, three minutes, so we go like circuit one, one, two, three, four, five, six, already over. So then another circuit, one, two, three, four, five, and another one. So you do not repeat uh, squat jumps in three sets. You just go one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, per circuit as well. It is also given a progression, so it can be easily done anywhere, in any location, at home, by anyone. Important thing is a diet. You see, the, uh, there was a good study recently conducted in uh, in U.S., uh, found out that the lockdown could also negatively impact diet, sleep, and physical activity among children with obesity. See, we keep talking students, but we should not forget about children. And kids are suffering quite often even more. So the sleeping patterns are disturbed, and then the eating pattern is disturbed, so they tend to eat more, and this is becoming an issue. And particularly with obese or overweight children. You know how the, the, the vicious circle war works. They're becoming overweight, they move less. They move less, their peers are not inviting them to participate in physical activity, and they eat more and they become more overweight. Of course, it is not in the lockdown situation, but it is that way. What about healthy eating or diet? Immunity system, your immune system is the most important thing. The COVID is actually hurting people whose immune system is uh, compromised, and that has to be actually considered. So immune boosting is important. Eating healthy food is important. So that will help actually to protect uh, from uh, the uh, virus attacking. However, again, I'm being on the positive side and having the, I mean, trying to use this opportunity to, show, to share a few things about uh, physical activities in the universities and in the colleges. Definitely lockdown is going to be over. Soon or not soon, uh, we all pray that it is over soon, however. Let us not forget that we will be back eventually to our normal situation, teaching, campus, and so on and so forth. And let's have a look how your students can be involved in physical activities and sport. We typically, and I'm happy to say that I'm involved in uh, the small group of international researchers who are working on creating university sport culture in the country, in India, I mean. So we typically speak about the culture component, participation component, and performance. What is it about? Culture, for the students in the campus, participation typically for athletes in the campus, performance, if you are lucky, 
or you are happily supporting top elite who are your students, but they are also representing the country and, of course, functioning outside the campus. So, culture or the very basic physical education and sports component. So, how is it? Basically, for sedentary students, they may not be active. Uh, and they may not be consumed, or they may be consumed by studies, as typical Indian student is. Um, they are not typically utilizing uh, the campus facilities, but they are defined as students, but they are also supposed to be involved in physical activity. And, you know, it's always good to have a higher percentage of students who are actually belonging to the second category, physically active students. And physically active students, uh, which are before or after classes, and they are the the kind of you know the the core of, of, of it's supposed to be the core of your college or your university, and uh, that is typically students who are enjoying health benefits of exercise. Uh, what about participation? Uh, those are the students who are actually active in certain sports, who can play the game. They are not necessarily actively playing, but they are good at it. They're always students playing volleyball or basketball or cocoa or kabaddi, and they are good at it. They can be defined as student at least. Yeah, they can, can defend the, 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 the flags of the uh, flag I mean, the, the university in the small scale competition. Another group is students who are in regular, but not in very intensive training, who played at the state level before joining the university, keep being active for at least three times a week, we typically call them at least students. And those are uh, more active and uh, can actually help others to become more active. The third group, students who are close to professional level, uh, joined on sports quota, possibly are of the national level, but are still kind of full-time students. They are not deserved much, and there are no spe by, by sports activities, there are no special arrangements done for them. So they are trying to maintain their performance level at reasonably high level. And we typically call them performance at least student. And we and they need some special attention, which typically we are supposed to provide them from the Department of Physical Education or from trainers or from the coach. Finally, and eventually, performance component and how students are involved. Students who are close to professional level, join on sports quota, are of the national level and are part-time students, for instance. The ones who are going in and out for the training camps, participating internationally or nationally, they will require support from the college or university. We call them a performing athlete student. And eventually, a lead athlete part-time student. Again, if you've got a student who is a full-time national team member, and this is more like his priority, and though we are, say, lucky to have some of them in some of the universities, and special arrangements are basically supposed to be there, particularly when athletes are uh, defending the colors of the nation. All right, so how do we involve uh, the other components or coaches or infrastructure, particularly in the campus? I checked your college website. It's a good one and got the good facilities, although as I managed to read your multi-gym is under construction along with the building, which is about to be commissioned. And I'm sure you will have more active uh, physical uh, activities and training facilities in the campus. So what is it? It's about infrastructure, athletes or students and coaches, or, or not necessarily coaches, but physical education lecturers. So again, in the culture component, we do have sedentary students and the repeat we will, we are typically trying to get them more involved. However, in the time of COVID, for instance, there are, is a great substitution for physical activities known as e-sport. Uh, gaming is now a huge, you know, activity and even money-making activity. Exit gaming is very popular. So if they have some apps which are actually sports-related, they'll be great. And uh, they are not may not necessarily even use the, the local facilities. However, they will always be looking at it and say, okay, maybe I will join one day. We typically call it a contemplation phase of, of behavioral change. Physically active students. They typically are enjoying health-related fitness and benefits of exercise. And again, no coaches are required, but I'm sure that uh, lecturers and teachers from the department can assist them and play a pivotal role in that. In participation uh, a cluster, 
uh, what student athlete local facilities uh, are usually involved in training or activities university coaches if you do have or definitely PE department lecturer is supposed to be actively supporting that. Athlete student, using local facilities, involving university coaches or, or physical education department lecturers, again, should be active here. Performing at least full-time student, I repeat, full-time student, at the same time performing at least, not a full-time athlete and part-time student, in or out of the campus, and I'm sure uh, West Bengal has good coaches and good facilities, and you can involve state coaches or uh, district coaches there and uh, for mutual benefit. Performance eventually. Participant, performing athlete, part time student. So that is where the scales are kind of, you know, weighing towards performance. But the part time student is still important, still. Uh, requires support from the academic staff, but they may still have uh, outside the campus involvement, state and centers of excellence, uh, and then coaches will be there. And of course, those students will be uh, per performing for a university in the university or intercollegiate competitions. And I'm sure you will most probably have some few good teams to actually represent your college in the state and maybe even nationally. And eventually, elite athletes uh, who are part-time students, but then it's a challenging thing, it's a challenging task. You have to have uh, either your own facilities or you have to have a memorandum of understanding or a full preparation, uh, you know, support uh, with uh, local sport authorities. And I'm sure it can be done, and I'm sure you have been thinking about that. And uh, that's basically it. That's what I wanted to share with you in this uh, brief session. And again, thank you for giving me that opportunity. And uh, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much. We thank you, sir, for helping us with various serious problems during the lockdown, before and after. And, sir, we are also very much excited about uh, the fact that you have taken a look at our college website and that you have really found it to be interesting. And we also extend our heartfelt thanks to you for taking the pains to read the brochure. Though it was a rather quickly written, uh, the fact that you found it useful. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, you. sir yes. Yes. Yes, uh, Alex, wonderful yeah, presentation, my dear friend. Thank you very much that you have, you. Uh, um, in spite of your busy schedule, you have given the time to the college on my recommendation. And thank you. Thanks a lot. It's wonderful lecture. And uh, this pandemic, everybody is benefited with this. And uh, I hope that everything is well in your university also. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Prof. Gurmit. And uh, again, thank you for inviting me. Although I was a little bit, uh, you know, uh, kind of worrying that uh, I'm not a COVID specialist, and uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it is, it is, I, it is I, not a specialist. I, I, you are a specialist. I, I actually, no, see, I mean, if if you allow me another minute, uh, see, mm -hmm. I, I happen to be a, a member of a Human Research Committee uh, of my mm -hmm. university. You will not believe how many grant applications and other stuff is pouring COVID related sort of, whereas when you start reading, it is non-related, absolutely. But people are using, you know, that COVID situation, you know, as, but you actually did a very good thing uh, calling for that seminar. And I, again, uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Prof. Gurmit, for introducing me to the uh, uh, Gabardanga College. Нет, еще не до свидания. See, you can speak Russian, right? And uh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, thank you, Principal, uh, like uh, Krishna Mandal, and thank you, Dr. Paramita. So, uh, yep, uh, I'm getting, I guess I'm concluding on that. I will still stay online, uh, but if you don't mind, I have a parallel meeting on the other 
<laughs> on the other thing. So I will be kind of sitting on two chairs, but I will remain online because I would like to hear what my uh, great friend and good colleague, uh, Prof. Gurmit Singh, is about to talk. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so we also have a few questions for you. We'll be yes. taking the questions at the end of all the three sessions. So, okay, so if you stay online, we don't mind if, if you're not available for us only. Uh, so uh, we will just give you the questions that some of our teachers and participants have raised. Okay, sir. I will, I will stay online. Don't you worry okay. about it. I will I, just I, I, I record my video. If record, yeah, I, just and, uh, I am here, so and I can hear you. Thank you thank so you, much. Thank you, thank you, sir. We are obliged. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, uh, Doctor, uh, uh, Prince, Mr. Principal, sir. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Right. Sir, can you hear me? Hello. Fully. Yes. Uh, should I ask Dr. Gurmeet Singh to continue with the next speech because he was the first speaker of the day? Hello, sir. Sir, please unmute yourself. Moru Gavil sir is waiting for a long time. I think okay. it would be better, yes. Okay, if if, if, if Burmi sir, uh, uh, don't mind, please. I don't know, sir. Uh, Dr. The, the, to Dr. Gurmit Singh Kapoor, sir, hello. Hello, sir, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yes, I'm, I'm listening to you. I'm hearing your voice. Okay, sir. Can, um, can, I, can I present my uh, presentation? Actually, sir, uh, Dr. Murugavil was there with us for quite some okay. time. So you would you mind. mind if he makes uh, his presentation? And maybe uh, if you could talk after him. I don't, I have no way, just I'm asking you. It's just my way of putting it across to uh, If, what do you say that? Because uh, I think it, uh, then you this uh, presentation will you be, uh, my, my presentation will be around uh, 45 minutes. I think it's enough time, 45 minutes. So maybe I can finish in 45 minutes. I will not take much time. Okay, sir. Mm, please. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So, so let me just quickly introduce Dr. Gurmeet Singh Kapoor, Department of Physical Education, Chairperson, Professor of Punjab University. Uh, he is going to be the next speaker for our webinar today. So I request Dr. Gurmeet Singh Kapoor to start with his presentation. It's over to you, sir. Just uh, give me one minute. I'm just presenting my presentation so that it will come to your screen. Uh, PPT on your screen? No, not at all. Yes, sir, it is. It is there, sir. It is there, sir. It is there? Yes, sir. One minute. Just, just, I have to check then because it is... Uh, in my screen, it is just on, just hold on. I mean, just I will take It is there. Time. It's all right. Okay, okay, okay. Just it I'm, has I'm just come out all it. right. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Just I'm coming to the first slide. Uh, this is my okay. This is my first slide. So first of all, thank you very much, uh, ma'am and uh, Krishan Kanta ji and the principal and the staff of the Damanga College Hindu College of Department of Physical Education. And uh, you have, uh, it's a great initiative that you have taken that uh, on this time that uh, to do this uh, webinar for your college and uh, your all the colleagues uh, or the physical education fraternity, those who are attending this lecture. So actually my talk uh, is on the personal fitness, which um, most of the topic uh, Alex already covered in it, but I hope that it will be definitely helpful during this time how you can improve your health through the exercises, which is very important. This is the time where you can uh, improve your fitness so that the when the when you go out uh, fully, everything is open, everything is there, uh, government will not ban. Still, you have to, if you uh, improve your immune system through exercise, definitely you will be, uh, in. Uh, you can say, safe while going out. So um, some of my presentation is that fact about the fitness and the sports performance. Yeah, uh, as everybody knows that high level of performance is not needed for health or the enjoyment from the activity. So high performance, high level performance 
in sports actually require more rigorous training than needed for the health so health related fitness when we talk about the health related fitness it is just you have to maintain your health so that you can do easily the job what you want in your daily routine life very easily without doing any efforts so high level of uh, this performance is more dependent on good genetics than health but uh, it requires both health related and skill related fitness components so when we there is a relationship between fitness and performance when we talk about health you need a little bit of training so with the training you can improve all these uh, components of health related fitness and um, uh, whether you are uh, whether it's uh, visible my slides ma'am excuse me are you getting me yes so we can hear you acha acha something something is wrong <laughs> there anyway uh, then uh, you you will achieve your health but when we talk about high level performance where the serious athletes can do they have they need both health related fitness and skill related fitness components but you for that you have to do regular training for that so these are the dimensions of health related fitness these are the five dimensions when we talk about health related fitness cardiovascular fitness which is very important in daily day to day routine life muscular endurance is also needed in uh, um, when we talk about health related fitness and muscular strength flexibility and body compositions but when we talk about dimensions of health skill related fitness there we need agility balance coordination speed power and reaction time which is also uh, very much needed to give your high level of performance during the right time during the competitions so as you know that at this time or you can say the obesity is the main problem you know that child childhood obesity has reached epidemic proportion in the most part of the world everybody is facing whether it's a west bengal whether it's punjab whether it's haryana or when we talk about uh, delhi and other parts of the country the children's you know that are eating more and exercise less we know that everybody the children's we you, you also and all the people those who are sitting in this um, webinar they are facing this type of problem that time spent watching television or using computers and because of this lockdown you know that the screen time increases but we have to manage this time which is very important and this lacks coupled with the poor dietary habits uh, that has led to the significant increase in the number of children with the type 2 diabetes and pre deposition of uh, this uh, hypertension coronary artery disease and others so this is a uh, really uh, you can say alarming uh, uh, thing for us all of us so when we talk about uh, fitness program when the fitness program comes in our mind 50% of the people who started an exercise program drop out within the first 6 months so this is the big problem we are uh, starting in a very uh, uh, in a zeal that we can do this we can do this but after few days slowly slowly the monotony comes i don't know they don't have some uh, good uh, you can say exercise program they drop out within that 6 month this is the fact so but in india you know that this uh, cardiovascular diseases are increasing by the time 2030 it will you can see that it is in the millions it is in the millions so this is the data uh, in 2004 now it is 2020 you can say it is projected in 2004 but still 2030 is very uh, near in 10 10 uh, years uh, is come to, to uh, 2030 you can see this this mortality from major communication communicable and communicable diseases uh, we have to face but we can stop this by doing our uh, we can change our lifestyle we can do so many changes in our life we can do this so what what is the uh, sad reality of today is uh you see that that some of the children want to play but most of the most of the children they want to spend more time on screen on uh, on seeing movies on cartoons and everything so they these are the stages of change you have to you know that the person first at start they are not ready to do some type of exercise program but you have to think about it what are the benefits of that then preparing for the action then you see you have to there is a time to take action and maintaining then after taking action you have to maintain that it. it's a good for life and there is a finding a balance when we talk about a balance there is a calories in food and calorie use if it is more calorie food is um, calories in food is more than definitely you will gain weight and if calorie in food is less then uh, there is a weight loss but you have to maintain the balance and uh, it's not that you have to start dieting it is just you have to eat right food which is very important 
nutrition plays a very important role in everybody's life what is the composition of a food what type of a food you are eating and when to eat uh, why you are eating you these are the questions you have to ask yourself and then find out these things that what is the right food for you use your food your food should be your medicine which is very important so making physical activity a part of your life you know that there are 1440 minutes in every days but you have to schedule only 30 of them for physical activity so so many minutes 24 hours but you know that we have to schedule only 30 minutes but still in spite of this in busy schedule we are not sparing this time this much of time so that how the physical activity impact health it helps weight control definitely it improves and reduces the feeling of depression and anxiety you know that during this uh, as alex already explained it, that there is a depression and anxiety among the people during this period because you are not going out during this lockdown curfew everything is there but you can if you are doing some type engage yourself in some type of physical activity definitely it, it will reduce the feeling of depression and anxiety and it also helps uh, in build and maintain healthy bones muscles everything you know that you can do lot of changes in your body once you have started your regular physical activity and you know that leading causes of diseases and disabilities associated with physical activities coronary heart diseases it is related to uh, this health uh, risk of physical activities strokes obesity all these from back pain so if you are doing regular physical activity you will be benefited you 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 will be avoid these things and sometime some of the people those who are very lazy they said that my doctor told me to keep in a shape well this is my shape and i am keeping it so this type of um, mindset we have to change our mindset we have to go out we have to do our exercise in home we can do lot of things there are lot of uh, exercise programs are there uh, the simple circuit training program uh, now uh, alex have already given to you that this program if you can start with this program no equipment is needed only you have to uh, stand up and do your exercises like this so getting started you have to setting the goals what will motivate you think about your reason for exercising you if you have some reasons about your exercises you will definitely it will motivate you are your goals important enough to keep you motivated long time so think short term and long term goals so how you can ask how will you benefited from your fitness plan day to day in one year in five year or 10 year so many goals you can set by yourself and you can you know that you can uh, set your goal like that i i want my old clothes be fit in me within one year so if you start your training you will reduce five or six 10 kg then definitely the old clothes come to you no you do not need to Uh, buy any more uh, new clothes for you yeah, these are the short term and long term goals which you can set according to your uh, planning so here are the some thing which you can do there are the principle if you follow the principles of sports training then definitely there are some methods and uh, anatomy of training sessions planning these are the thing we will cover here so here are the some principles of training if you want to start the training to train effectively we must adopt the following uh, principles of training the first principle is specificity the second one is progression then overload then reversibility and tedium so first we talk about specificity so it means that if you want uh, your training must be specific to the requirement what is your requirement first if your requirement is only health related fitness you want to attain that only healthy then you have to focus on only those uh, activities where only the health will be benefited for example a sprinter would be concentrated on speed rather than cardiovascular endurance so it means the sprinter have to work on uh, sprinting part not going to the long runs okay this is a very good principle you have to follow while you are planning your plan and the progression as you know that as we increase the amount of training means the load we increasing we do we must increase the stress of our body we have to increase the load so in this way our training will be become progressively difficult as we uh, our uh, training will be uh, progressively difficult definitely um, and, and this progression should be gradual to prevent injuries uh, it's it's not that one day you are doing very hard work and another day you are doing more hard work no not like that you can just gradually gradually you have just seen that how you can increase the training intensity the timings everything so we can ensure that progressive uh, uh, progression during aerobic session by checking our pulse rate 
Yes, you can check your pulse rate. Once you see that your pulse rate from the radial pulse, you can check it that uh, if your pulse is, uh, uh, goes up to 150, 160, you are doing some aerobic type of workout. Then after two minutes, it comes to one below 120. It means now you are ready for the next repetition. So in that way, you can start your repetition, but, but just by checking your pulse rate. So another principle is overload. To improve uh, our fitness, we must overload it. Okay, or the stress of a body system. So uh, here, overload can be implemented. Uh, implemented the fit principle. What is the fit principle? Uh, I will tell you the fit principle. Just hold on. Uh, after this slide, uh, reversibility is another um, principle. It means that principle. This uh, fitness is not everybody's of cup. If you are not doing training, you are not getting benefit of fitness. Uh, so if you if you decrease your fit uh, training your fitness automatically decreases it. So if here in, in picture, you see that the person is, is injured due to some injury, some accident, it will definitely go for reversibility. Muscle will also uh, from uh, atrophy, the, it's, um, it's come down. Your muscle will come down. But other parts which are not injured, at this time, you can start exercising those parts, those who are not injured. So by injury, it doesn't mean that you are just lying on your bed and uh, doing complete rest. No, when other parts are okay, you can do some exercises of other parts. So TDM is another principle. It's boredom that I'm already uh, telling you about this, that range of training. There's a varying training method we, you should introduce in your training plan so that the boredom should, should not be there. Because of why the dropouts are there, it's only because of the boredom. The, the training is same to same. You are doing same training every day, every day. The person will be bored after some time. They, the dropout is there. So you have to vary your training methods and you can introduce every day new sessions, every day new planning, new training. You can definitely, uh, which can also reduce the risk of overuse injuries. So uh, when we talk about objections, there are some objections to, you can say overcoming the objections. Some persons say it's too early in the morning. But I don't think so. It's too early for what? Not for the words. Get up early. Some, these are the excuses by some person. I just ate it. Wait, you just ate it? For what? After dinner, walk can be the best, especially with the family members. I'm too fat. This is also an excuse. Okay, you will weigh less. You want to weigh less. So if you keep exercises regularly, you can definitely weigh less. And it's too cold. During the winter, the, some people said that, especially the people from the south, they said it's very cold when they, uh, when they come to north side. Nah, it's, it's very cold. They are, they are not coming out from their beds. So you can dress warmly. You have, we have nowadays a good clothes or jogging uh, track suits, everything. You can wear those things. Or you have gyms, which are almost heated. Everywhere is there. So in the same way, you are talking about the, it's too hot. Means too hot during the summer. Now summer is going on. It's it's very hot today in Chandigarh, but still we are doing some uh, indoor exercises. You know then about uh, which could uh, I I doubt you could find a fitness uh, center without air conditioning in these days and ages. So when somebody says that I feel like sitting, so the more you sit, the more you want to sit. So get going. So a lot of excuses are there. I have only twenty minutes. I am on vacation. I am not. I hate gardening. I love shopping. So a lot of things uh, are there. You can do changes. You, you have to think. You can counter these excuses and you can definitely do. I have seen the people, those who are fitness freaks, they put everything, their shoes, their track suits in the car or in the scooter. Whenever they get a time, they wear it and they start training. And they are not missing the training sessions. So these are the, some uh, excuses. Now come to the skill-related fitness, which is very important. Uh, good skill related fitness ability to learn skills. You need um, uh, good fitness and good uh, skill related fitness does not ensure good skills, but practice is needed to learn skills. Practice, you know that here is a method of calculating your heart rate uh, with a Corbian formula. You all people can calculate your target heart rate, which is very important before starting your any training regime. So it is the formula is 220 minus H, which will give you the maximum heart rate. And uh, from the maximum heart rate, you can reduce, you can minus it the resting heart rate. Resting heart rate is when you uh, get up in the early in the morning and just check your pulse rate. What is the pulse rate? Whether it is a 60 seconds, 60 beats per minute, 
50 beats per minute or 70 beats per minute you just minus it from the maximum heart rate you will get the heart rate reserves so here is the example for a 50 year old man with a resting heart rate of 65 beats per minute who want to train at um, 70% of maximum uh, uh, his uh, maximum training intensity so 220 minus 50 it we will get it 170 beats per minute which is maximum heart rate so 170 out of 170 we can minus the resting heart rate we will get 105 beats per minute which is a heart rate reserve when we multiply the heart rate reserve with the training intensity and uh, and add the resting heart rate we will get the 139 beats per minute so this is 139 beats per minute is the target heart rate zone where the this person can work so this is very important you all people can calculate your uh, target heart rate which will give you the your uh, maximum heart rate or uh, so where on the zone where you can you will want to work okay so here these are the zones these are the target heart rate for different ages and the various level of activities when we talk about uh, uh, moderate activity for maximum heart rate it's 40 to 60 percent of your maximum this is uh, very important for the people for the normal those who just want to maintain their health so they have to work on 40 to 60 percent of the maximum but when you come to the weight management then you have to go up 60 to 70 percent uh, of the maximum heart rate and if you now going further you want to improve your aerobic workout you're going for competitive training then you have to go for 60 to 100 percent of the maximum heart rate then only you can improve uh, your fitness level otherwise it's very difficult so this target heart rate zone uh, formula is very important if you are doing uh, if you want to start your training so uh, here is the fit principle which i have already told you that uh, in the coming slide this is what what do you mean by it it's the first fit of f is frequency that how often we train in a week if if you are doing training 5 days a week 4 days a week or 6 days a week then intensity the how hard our sessions are if your sessions are two sessions are hard how how hard your session in a week and time how long our sessions are and type what type of training sessions you what you include in your session whether it's a circuit training which will is a which will develop the strength endurance whether it's a speed training whether it's aerobic only continuous training for the aerobic uh, improvement so this is about the fit principle and now when we talk about the training sessions uh, all the training sessions should be four main sections start with the warm up then with the fitness session uh, session then go for the skill session then warm down so warm up and warm down is very important but the two fitness and the skill sessions are very important to maintain your fitness to improve your fitness so a lot of things you can do warm up everybody all the uh, PE teachers are here at uh, their uh, physical education fraternity is sitting over here they they know how to warm up so these warm up is very important warm down is very important here are the some stretching exercises to improve your flexibility but stretching means you have to do regular stretching which is very important if if you don't do regular stretching you can't um, uh, relax your body you can't do next day session uh, see, these are the exercises, a lot of exercises of each and every muscle group. But stretching is very important. You have to hold it. Stretch and hold method is there. And don't stretch. Uh, stretch to the tightness. Don't stretch your joints. Only just stretch your muscles. So stretching techniques, warm-up, stretch to the point of tightness. Stretching is specific only uh, to the muscles you stretch. Avoid stretching joint and ligament. This is very important. Yeah, this is very, very important that avoid stretching joint and ligaments. Sometimes we stretch jo joint and ligament very rigorously and we injure ourselves. So stretch slowly and under uh, control. And it is also recommended to stretch five to six times per week, which is, it means every day after warming up and, and cooling down, you have to do stretching so that you can do your daily routine work easily without hurting yourself. So myth about uh, gaining muscles, Nowadays, you know that uh, from today onward, I think uh, gyms are open. So gym people, they are actually recommended uh, in India. There is a um, tradition to recommending the supplement. You can do uh, eat this creatine monohydrate or creatine everything. But do not act independently to increase muscle size. 
they work with allowing an individual to do more total work during training greater training stimulus to muscle so high protein diets body has no storage form of protein so extra protein does not stimulate protein synthesis so you have to be very careful about these things while starting your training regime or going to the gym so here are some type of aerobic training Lows, long slow distance uh, running is there you can do long slow cycling is there cycling is very safe during this pedaling period interval training is very uh, you can say important and very good method to improve your fitness out of every method interval training is the best method to improve your fitness it builds peak uh, anaerobic capacity it increases your vo2 max and threshold training which actually improves um, ability to maintain the race pace for continuous length of time those who want to race nowadays there is a tradition to uh, do marathons in india uh, my personal best i want to participate in this so if you have any and this type of idea in your mind you can start your training everybody can start your training and just um, uh, one thing kept in your mind that your competition is with yourself don't compete with other people if your personal best is 2 uh, hour 50 minutes one day for the full marathon now next time you think you will plan that i can come down to 2 hours 40 minutes so this is your competition with within yourself okay so sport specific training is uh, very important for example you know that triathletes in west bengal there is a tradition of doing uh, this uh, triathlon so swimming everybody knows swimming they had to practice in open water so overtraining syndromes when we talk about overtraining athletes and other people has there are the syndrome of the overtraining which is fatigue poor irregular heart rate is there high resting heart rates are there and irritability so it's its main treatment is rest you have to do rest you have to stop training for a while so that overtraining syndrome goes and your body recovers and then you start training okay some of the fatigue related injuries are there types of injuries uh, from fitness uh, related activities overuse injuries are due to cumulative continuous stress stresses on the tendons and the bones and ligaments during exercises and traumatic uh, injuries are sudden and violent typically from accident during exercise or or sports but you can prevent the injuries appropriate footwear is there yes you you have to choose appropriate footwear footwear which is very important which actually fit in your uh, in your feet size and function it should uh, function properly then appropriate protective equipment while uh, wearing goggles and helmets while cycling or riding very important nowadays so here's the anatomy of the running shoes if you your toe mid sole the arch support and the um, the heel counters the padding you have to be very careful uh, while buying the shoes don't buy any shoes which is uh, just uh, not a good it's a just a Uh, you can say in a market nowadays uh, duplicacy is there so you have to be very careful while buying the shoes so common uh, the injuries the overuse injuries are the plantar fasciitis and shin splints are there yes runner knees are there it's a pain on the knees so it is pain experience when uh, downward pressure is applied to the knee cap after running is uh, straightened uh, fully so you have to be very careful uh, while planning so treatment for these type of injuries rest everybody knows this rest ice compression and elevation you have to follow this the point thing is that we know this thing this treatment but we are not implementing we are not doing this type of a treatment for our injuries don't go any other place just at home you can do this type of a treatment to yourself so exercising in the heat nowadays very hot is, uh, summer is there in in north side so three major type of heat stresses are there you know that heat cramps um when we uh, talk about heat cramps uh, uh you just see this heat cramp the least serious problem which can usually be prevented by warm up adequate fluid replacement and uh, a diet that can include um, uh, uh, uh electrolyte and lost uh, during sweating and we call it uh, sodium and potassium then heat exhaustion is caused by excessive water loss resulting from uh, prolonged exercise or work but the symptoms of heat uh, exhaustion uh, include nausea headache fatigue and dizziness and faintness so uh, if you are suffering from heat exhaustion your skin will be cool and moist 
because of the body cooling system has uh, flattered and circulation has slowed down so uh, heat stroke often called the sun stroke it's uh, actually uh, trigger a serious metabolic events uh, that may result in any uh, irreversible um, injuries or death body core temperature can rise uh, from uh, uh, you can say normal 98.6 fahrenheit to 105 fahrenheit to 110 fahrenheit within uh, minutes after the body cooling mechanism shut down so you have to be very careful so plenty the uh, prevention is plenty drink plenty of fluids especially the sports drink to prevent uh, hypothermia uh then exercise in uh, cold hyper hypothermia prevention is you have to watch the weather condition uh, always while doing uh, exercise take a friend with you and layer of clothing be care of, uh, careful of that and drink drink plenty of fluids which is very important then uh, sports nutrition i have already and professor alex also uh, touch upon this uh, thing that sports nutrition you need more calories if you and doing any type of a training increase complex carbohydrates increase protein needs and uh, your um, uh, required daily allowance of vitamins and minerals you can do it and eat familiar actually you know that athletes have specific needs that are more specific to others the most important need is for the more calories so while athletes need more additional uh, uh, protein some Uh, since some of them uh, for the energy they can get this additional amount uh, through extra calories high protein diets are needed uh, for both resistance and uh, strength athletes when we talk about this uh, okay then nutrition and when we talk about nutrition and exercise what to eat carbohydrates protein and fats so hydration when we talk about plain water is sufficient for workouts uh, lasting 1 hour or less but for those over 1 hours sports drinks with electrolytes should be considered it is very important if you do this uh, type of a practice because for 30 minutes of exercise only plain water is sufficient but if you do more than one hour you have to sport you require this sports drink which is very important and uh, then creating your own fitness plan design a plan to improve your maintain cardiovascular fitness identifying your fitness goals choose activities you that you like make it comprehensive include warm up what uh, stretching strength development aerobic cool down don't forget cross training which is very important cross training uh, in which you can do lot of thing uh, by your own you can add it will give the variety to your training uh, regime training here are the some examples of core stabilization you can uh, do exercises uh, planks uh, alex have already given the example um, importance of the planks hip raises is there and uh, for the spine you flexible you can uh, move bird and dog pose then side planks is there then some lunges are there and and some exercises with exercise ball which is very important you know that these type of exercise once you have to learn first while doing you have to learn first make a balance on these uh, uh exercise balls fitness balls you will get it by 400 or 500 rupees uh, this ball in the market and with uh, this you can take some medicine balls also which is also give you some helping in uh, some variety of exercises so here is the planks in planks lie on your stomach four arms flat on the floor with the hands together feet together with the toes and rounds lift stomach off the ground and hold it keep your body in a straight line from shoulder to toes keep the stomach tight so this will definitely if you're doing regular this type of exercises and another one is uh, uh, you see this this is with a ball you can do this so explosive stabilization with this uh, ex- uh, medicine balls these with the advancement of exercises you will definitely maintain your fitness you can maintain the fitness of the athletes also if you are a physical education teacher you can recommend them these type of exercises which is very good so before um, planning anything pre participation checklist should be with you if anybody wants a uh, newcomer who wants to start any type of a training program after uh, a gap uh, the like this these are the points has a doctor ever said that you have a heart trouble do you suffer from frequent uh, from the chest pain so so many questions are there 
if all the answers yes to any question we advise to consult with your physician before beginning an exercise program which is very important so my final tips for being more active park the car further away from your destination so that after eating your food in the um, restaurant you can come by walking to your uh, car which is actually helpful in digestion and take a stair instead of elevator which is very can these are the small changes you can do these changes in your lifestyle so play with the children or the pet everybody wins where everybody wins and take uh, fitness breaks perform gardening home repair activities exercises while uh, while watching tv program lot of um, apps are there programs are there made by some universities where the, you can do exercises while watching your tvs and keep a pair of comfortable walking or running shoes in your car or in office so that whenever you get a time you can do the exercises so just play have a fun and enjoy the game thank you very much uh, for your patient uh, uh, listening of my lecture thanks a lot ma'am yes thank you sir we have benefited a lot from your presentation and uh, we would just like to add that uh, the easiest processes that you suggested in your last slide i think would appeal to many laymen mm -hmm. who are not quite very much uh, yeah. fitness yeah. fitness freaks but who yeah. would like to use the simplest methods available at home especially during this lockdown thank you so much sir uh any if, if any any question from the uh, from the audience they can they can ask me any time i, I can the session sir okay uh, when the session will end uh we will have dr murugavar's speech and thereafter we'll uh -huh. have interactive session okay okay i'll wait for that no problem okay sir thank, thank you, you. thank you okay for now uh we have finished with dr gurmeet singh kapoor's paper and presentation the last and final session is about to begin we have with us professor k murugavel is professor head and director of bharatiya university coimbatore and uh, he is a specialist in exercise physiology track and field and football so sir if you are there please would you unmute yourself sir hello sir dr k murugavel would you please unmute yourself Principal sir, principal sir, would you please check if Dr. Murugavel is here or not? Hello, sir, is it audible to you? Not yet. We <laughs> just see. Uh, Professor Krishna Kanto Dhali, can you hear me? Professor Krishna Kanto Dhali, can you hear me? Hello. Ah. Yes, please call Dr. Murugavel and see if there are network Thank issues. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He has unmuted. He has unmuted. Okay. Hello. Yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I am getting. Okay, okay, sir. We have uh, to apologize to you at first before we ask you to start your presentation. there were problems with the technical issues also at the beginning of the session and therefore we have delayed and you have been waiting with us thank you very much for your patience sir sir so please begin with your presentation sir biniro nanabu sir can you can you able to see the screen slides right. yes okay. sir we can yes. see your screen slides sir can you make it full screen it will be better okay. visible how is it okay it's more okay. or less more or less no 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 full screen are you getting full screen 
no actually uh, it is uh, the slides at the left hand side panel they are visible so if the slides are individually shown it will be a full screen that is what otherwise it is perfectly visible there is no problem with visibility sir Now you see the okay. full screen. Yes, 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 sir. It's all right. Perfectly all right, sir. Absolutely okay. all right. Thank you. Okay. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank okay. you. How long you. can I take for this session? Sir, uh, maybe half an hour to thirty-five minutes. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. That is the maximum time that we've allotted for each speaker, sir. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, good evening, all of you. I am uh, most respected uh, principal of uh, the college uh, HK Mondal, and uh, the lead speakers, previous speakers, respected previous speakers, and my friend Dr. Kurmit Singh from Punjab University. and dr alexander from malaysia and my friend kk kali the convener of this uh, webinar and he is coordinating this webinar and my respected participants so i am from tamil nadu from bharathi university and first at the outset i must uh, and they said that don't afraid of me i won't demonstrate any physical exercise now it's not possible also through online and let us start uh, at the outset i must i must thank the principal the convener the students and faculty members of uh, the hindu college of west uh, bengal for having given me this uh, opportunity to interact with the my friends at calcutta and participants from uh, all over uh, the global so today topic is uh, really the concepts of physical exercise on uh, to the students during covid it's a need based area we have to discuss uh, very many angles i must congratulate the convener for having chosen this unique area before uh, we start the discussion so i want to have a session to be started with a quote a wonderful quote given by swami vivekananda he is from also west bengal kata he has given a wonderful quote on our fitness in health generally a man who can be near to god through playing football than through reading gita see a man who is reading gita and a man who is playing football you can tell me who can lead a peaceful healthy and wealthy life among these two according to swami vivekananda who has uh, yeah, created a a noble principles all over the world is always a principles for life here. all over the world as given this wonderful quote it is taken from a new horizon advised youth of swami vivekananda so only through playing football you can be healthy so if you are healthy you can lead a peaceful life mentally peaceful life than reading it that that's a message he swami vivekananda wanted to convey yes dear friends this is a wonderful quote so from this we can discuss for 3 hours even regarding this during pandemic time and dear friends this is a topic is new concepts of physical exercise to the students during pandemic see pandemic how the word has come out from the verbal scenario pandemic so we have uh, compiled this word out of uh, the situations we face due to several aspects 
Now, basically, we must do three things. We must create awareness among the minds of the students, particularly youth, since only 4% of uh, Indian youth, particularly college-going students, are doing involving with physical exercises. Among, <coughs> more, however, out of 10, out of 10 students, college-going students, six students are, are facing health problems now. These are statistics given by Times of India recently. So only 4% of the 137 crores people, only 4% of the population, particularly the youth, college-going youth, are involving with the physical exercise. So think about the fitness, mental health, of youth of our country, what we should do as a teacher, as a parent, as an administrator, as a uh, caregivers. First, we must realize our own responsibilities to inculcate the practice of doing physical exercises among the students. So, I have some of my concepts with this. Four stages, in four stages, we can create awareness among the students to get with involved with the physical exercise to fight against the infections due to viral infections as of corona. So first stage, as a principal, as an administrator, as a teacher, as a parent, as a caregiver, we must uh, educate the facts about these such type of pandemic situations. Facts. For example, now we are suffering, we are fighting against the invisible enemy throughout the world. It's not only to our country. It's throughout the world. Everyone is fighting against the invisible enemy called coronavirus virus. Is of, uh, so first we must create, we must feed the facts about this uh, a pandemic situation due to viral infections. Uh, madam, my voice is audible now? Hello? Yes, sir. Your voice is audible. Oh, my, my, my voice is audible. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Sir, are you changing your screen or is this the first screen that you are showing us? Oh, I have some slides also. Don't worry. Uh, okay, sir. This actually... Participants are asking me that. Okay, it is all right. I have, I have slides. I have slides. Okay, sir. Please continue. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma See, instead of moving directly to physical exercises during the concepts of physical exercise during the COVID, so we must, uh, we must. Cultivate four stages to create the awareness. Basically, we must educate our youth, particularly college-going students, regarding the facts about this pandemic. Facts in the sense, what is corona? What are the symptoms we are, we are facing? How the mode of spreading of this? What are the risk factors we come across? And treatment aspect. So, regarding fact, fact about this pandemic or COVID, we must educate the students. There, whether I don't know that whether we uh, we fulfill with this contest or not. Being a teacher, when we interact with the students, when we deal with the students, we must uh, make them clear about the facts of uh, the present situation. Then, as a role, second stage, administrators, teachers, principal, staff. What we have, what we are doing with the students, doing this present situation, so that that role is very much essential, is much more important than treatment, the mode of spread, anything else. So, being administrator, correspondent, or secretary of an institution, teacher, so we must to provide all sort of precautionary measures to the students to come out of this pandemic situation. Then, as a parent, as a parent, because I as a parent, what are the precautionary measures we have to teach, we have to practice at our home, at home as well as at the home. So we must educate the youth, then students and children. So we must make them to realize their own responsibility to overcome this. 
to overcome this pandemic situation first the students college as well as school going children they must be able to understand so we create awareness as a parent as administrator as a principal everybody but they must realize their own responsibility because thousand men can drive a horse into water none can make it to drink unless otherwise it feels thirst so unless otherwise a horse feels thirst it, it will not drink it will not consume water so there should there should be a there he should feel the necessity he should feel his own responsibility such a way the students and children and students either school going or college going students they must realize their own responsibility of doing physical exercise maintaining physical fitness and mental health and final stage only physical mental health and psychological support see after educating them creating awareness by all sectors of the society uh, by all the sectors of society the students and the children particularly the kids those who are going for primary and lower grades they must realize their responsibility to come <coughs> come out of this uh, pandemic situation last stage only i am placing the mental health and psychological support so this is the main context of this uh, today's discussion so mental health in sense it, it's not a single entity it's not single entity it's related to body so most of us we think that the mental mental fitness mental health is related to only fitness is only related to mind no 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 it's it's not at all it's totally depending upon your body totally depending upon your body unless otherwise your body is maintained see i can give you another slide to substantiate my version so always the sound mind can exist only in the sound body so if you want to have the sound mind you should have sound body if you want to have a sound body you need to exercise daily so whenever we get problem whenever we consult doctor whenever we consult physiotherapist we start to, to start to do exercise or take medications so this is situation prevails at our country there is not actually it's not a problem this is not a, practically it's not possible so if you want to have a mentally healthy individual in the society we need to have a sound body in this sense the sikh society will yield six citizens the six six citizens will also form six society there is another concept sorry sorry sir it's an urgent file or please good good see six citizens will form six society six society also will yield six citizens so vice versa so we must if we want to have a mentally mental health we must have sound body that's why the physical exercise are much more essential than in, in cultivating the sound mind in our among the our school college youth now see another carl louis he must be knowing uh, the eight medal winners in the olympics consecutive olympics four medal four olympics carl louis from united states of america uh, one among our previous speaker from malaysia has discussed about the nutrition so from the nutrition point of view if we discuss uh, our carl louis the eight medal winner in the consecutive four olympics is a pure vegetarian for your kind information so a pure vegetarian is uh, is far away from non vegetarian diet so nutritional plays a vital role that we are going to discuss later now a day a day without the exercise as a step towards getting smaller fatter and weak see see the beautiful words this is very very beautiful words a day without the exercise as a step towards getting smaller fatter and we can so this this is this is more than sufficient to uh, describe anything else in this discussion you start with your day start day with the exercises and you can have this sound body when automatically sound body exists the sound mind will also exist in your body now again i tell you 
I will. I will. I never. I never demonstrate any exercise to participants. Uh, let us move to the main concept of today's discussion. After uh, discussing this, uh, another quotable, beautiful words by Plato. It's here. Yeah. As I told you, the mental health is not only related. There are network problems, I believe. Hello, hello. Oh no! Can you hear me? I think our network network problem, ma'am. Ma this is a network yes. problem, definitely. Yes, 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 yes. Sir. Oh no! Can you hear me? Hello. Oh no! There's a network problem with Dr. Murugavel's, uh, I think, presentation. Hello. There is a network problem. Hello. Or no? Please. But whose problem is this? Moruga Hilsar's problem or our problem? We really cannot understand, so let us see. I think it is not our problem, it is Murkavar's problem, but Arnab should check if there is some problem with muting. That is why I was asking him to talk. No, 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 Left course, you Left course, a meeting a problem, network a problem. If you phone for a dako number of us, sir, who left who gave this lecture? This is a time hour already because this is left problem. I think, meantime, you can start with the question answering. Who gave this lecture? Lecture about. The problem is time is over, but five minutes is already but over. Then new time is at. Please, someone get back to Professor Murugavel. Krishnada, please get back to him. Phone got chido. Phone got Ma'am, ma meantime, yes. you can, uh, excuse me, ma'am, meantime, you can, yes. uh, you can talk to uh, Alex, he's online, I think we okay, can okay, start okay. with the question answering with the Alex. Okay, sir, sir, okay. Mr. Principal, sir, what should I do? Question ready, I say. Uh, question ready, I say. Left question, below. we can take one question in okay. between. Okay, okay. This question is actually to Professor uh, Alexander. Uh, Professor Alexander, if he's there. Yeah, yeah. Sir, so, uh, thank you. Uh, this is the question that uh, one of our teachers, Professor Koshik Dash, from the Department of Mathematics, and he's also teaching at the BA department of our college. He has asked, what is the 
responsibility of teachers in maintaining mental health of students at the same time he has placed another question what is the importance of having mathematics games in sports education if there is such a possibility all right okay thank you thank you for the question it's a good one and uh, luckily it is not checking my mathematical skills I guess I mean, <laughs> but it was very long time ago when it last was challenged, kind of. Uh, okay, uh, the uh, uh, definitely there is uh, some degree of responsibility of a teacher for a mental health of a student, and uh, for that very reason, there is institution of mentorship and uh, academic advisory, and uh, I'm sure you're practicing that in your college. And uh, particularly like every year when we have new students, they've been uh, typically distributed among the lecturers and uh, academic advisors approved. So that uh, students, if they have an issue, whatever that issue is, they can approach the lecturer and they can talk and they can get the proper advice and so on and so forth. So, uh, uh, so definitely there is some degree of uh, responsibility, but not the entire one. As of the uh, mathematical skills and physical education and sports, uh, definitely those two are getting closer to each other. See, we are teaching biomechanics, we are teaching kinesiology, and uh, neither of these uh, courses can be taught without proper knowledge of uh, mathematics, algebra, and geometry, and whatnot. So uh, sports as such is becoming very much uh, quantitative, because previously we used to say, okay, qualitative analysis is good enough. Not, not anymore. So we are going into quantitative and quantitative analysis. We are going into a lot of statistical issues. And you cannot publish these days if you are not familiar with this PSS. And uh, honestly speaking, like if you are not using uh, like uh, that social package for social sciences, statistical package for social sciences, you don't stand a chance to publish in a proper journal. So we are actually teaching our own students uh, the uh, research methodology and statistics and whatnot. So it is very much coming together and particularly also sports engineering is another field where uh, the knowledge of mathematics is uh, critical. I hope I answered the question. Yes, thank you, sir. The next question is to Professor uh, Gurmeet Singh Kapoor. And the question is from Department of Physical Education, Professor Pradhut Kumar Vishash, APC College, New Barakpur. He has raised a question regarding the mental health of students. And I think his basic question was, how do you associate this mental health of students to the physical exercise? That is, whether such an association should be made at all and whether we are actually in a position to allow such an association? No, actually, uh, the question is a valid one that mental health, without uh, physical health, mental health will not be there. It's, it's uh, you can say, all the dimensions of health. We talk about uh, emotional health, mental health, physical health. So all these, actually, if you're doing regular physical training, Automatically, you can see that the athlete, those who are doing uh, very good training, those who are uh, um, very good in sports, they are equally mentally also fit. So physically fit person can be a mentally fit, but a mentally fit person sometimes cannot be a physically fit. So in both ways, if you're doing regular training, automatically, uh, because you know that mental health, when we talk about mental health, all the enzymes it uh, secreted during the training it will uh, physically uh, physical training actually opens everything it will uh, open your arteries it will open your mind it will open your mindset it will it will give you the space that you can do this you can do this you are feel happy while doing training in the greeks greek people said if you want to make your body fit then do physical exercise regularly they said if you want to make your soul beautiful then you can attach yourself to the music 
so in west bengal music is i think is in your blood music so physical exercise also so attach your physical exercises and uh, uh, your music you will definitely be benefited and and by listening music your m- mental health is automatically be uh, good so it is correlation with this but those only with the regular physical activity not physical activity regular physical activity can help to improve your mental health uh thank you sir uh, i would like to ask if, if any of the participants right now if any of the participants right now are ready to ask any questions you may please unmute yourself one by one and raise the questions yourself it is a request to all the participants if you wish you may unmute yourself and raise the questions one by one would any of the participants like to speak uh, i think uh, uh, question is not there but i i must uh, tell you all the physical education pe uh, teachers pe students are sitting over here other people are sitting here i must uh, give you a message that uh, please introduce physical literacy among the children in your schools where you are working because physical literacy nowadays a very important thing if you want to be a good physical education teacher or good uh, sports teacher then you must go through physical literacy introduce this in your schools uh, ensure that each and every student in the school be physical literate and if you do this no need of uh, any talent identification uh, you want to go anywhere else you can do it uh, over there i think uh, professor murug is there dr murug is back yes 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 is audible madam yes yes it is audible sir please continue yes sir shall i start madam right. yes sir please continue sir okay 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 so as we have discussed so only way of strengthening immunity is exercise plays a vital role two ways you can strengthen your immunity first way is the innate innate immunity some of people of our country particularly when compared to other countries indian we people from india we have got a strong immune system that's why we get less mortality rate in the due to this covid 19 one first way is innate immunity second way of strengthening adaptive immunity that adaptive immunity can be done only through physical exercises physical exercises see so i want to stress to young young students of our country so due to exercise there are several benefits which we are going to achieve due to benefit so what happens why we should do exercise so with two glands of our body which present at our body i could be able to explain better than what we have discussed so far so dear dear students there are two glands at our small glands number one is thymus gland is uh, otherwise called the heart of the immunity system another gland is pineal gland another gland is pineal gland so what happens if you do exercise this is my question the question of everybody every citizen everybody is raising question what will happen if you do exercise there's a question if you do exercise if you do exercise what do we that should be educated to the students simply we cannot make them to involve with the exercises mudichara mudichara see if you do exercise what happens what are the physiological changes take place in the human body we must teach them to the youth of our country so i i, I have a few more points to share with this see so if we do regular exercise as i told you 15 minutes at minimum 15 minutes the maximum 30 minutes in this day regularly is it audible madam so we Hello. can hear you yes so we can hear you okay we okay. can hear you okay okay if we do physical exercise basically how the physiology system the parameters are getting changed to strengthen the immune system basically if you do exercise 
blood circulation is increased to your brain by this secretion the neurotransmitters are the impulses are passed easily to the brain from the brain to the nervous system to to connect entire systems of our body organs of our body by this exercise the, our system releases serotonin dopamine oxytocin and neurons the functional units of nervous system are neurons so this neuron number of newborn neurons are increased due to increased blood flow to your brain this process activates this process activates release of very many chemicals very many substances to strengthen your immunity system this is what i want to convey we do exercise circulation is increased the newborn neurons number of newborn neurons are enhanced so the neural transmitter that taking place very easily without any obstacle so by this process very many chemical positive chemicals hormones are released for example serotonin dopamine oxytocin melatonin thymosin etc etc all these are releasing your total boosting immunity manages stress releases anxiety serotonin dopamine oxytocin releases your stress releases your anxiety and boosts your immunity so this concept the basic say the very very basic science concept scientific concept derived from science this must be educated to the students simply if we say exercise exercise daily if you do exercise you will improve immunity if you do exercise you can fight with virus like corona if you do exercise you can be fit you can nothing else they must realize the concept behind doing exercise what happens what will not happen this is what the duty of the teacher particularly of our gurmi gurmi singh dr gurmi singh from punjab university just he was revealing so the physical activity should be made as compulsory for school children so by making the physical activity as compulsory part for school children so we can educate them the physiological benefits of exercise to strengthen the immune immune system so that's what i i'm here i am <coughs> this is the message i want to convey to youth of our country so next so within 5 minutes i will complete madam don't worry i won't take much time i have also some other assignments please okay sir it is all right you can take 10 minutes no problem sir the thymus gland which is uh, say heart of the immune system is located as a bifurcation of the trachea and the thoracic cavity what is the nature of this thymus gland is very very small gland very very small gland what's the role of this 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 plays a vital role in in the maturation of your immune system during childhood particularly as our gurmi singh was discussing the pre adolescent period the children must involve with the physical activities so during the childhood period the maturation of immune system will reach its maximum specifically t cells t cells which are responsible for making making the t cells making the immunity system into the peak stage the t cells are produced by the thymus gland they have got the uh, functional ability to make the basic cell the b, b cells to get matured to strengthen the immune system this is what thymus gland so only way to stimulate to make this thymus gland to be active is exercise no medicine no drugs no diet nothing else can compensate with the exercise so only way to make this thymus gland to be active to strengthen the immune system of of an individual so by way of doing exercise thymus gland is activated so that the t cells are produced by your uh, thymus gland another hormone is also secreted by thymus gland namely thymosin this thymosin hormone makes a basic cell into t cells from the thymus gland so the role of the maturation development of immune system say do you know another concept of this the thymus gland is very small gland very small gland so it it can grow only up to puberty only puberty particularly this during childhood the gland size will be little bit larger 
when you get aged the size of the thymus gland will come down so it can grow only up to puberty after puberty it will not grow and that will be covered by the fat and other functions so the basic concept is thymus gland produces t cells hormone namely thymosin which regulates and strengthens maturate the immune system of our body by the means of exercise my young friends first gland second gland is melatonin which is a pea sized gland situated at the base of the midline of your brain which is responsible for secretion of a, a hormone namely melatonin hormone namely melatonin this melatonin hormone has got the enormous functions in your body enormous functions in your body so what it it regulates basically sleeping duration of sleeping sleeping dis- disturbances are regulated by this melatonin when this melatonin hormone is secreted sufficient amount only during darkness during sleeping hours during sleeping hours this melatonin is secreted sufficient amount of amount to strengthen the immunity but i will tell you what's the relationship between this uh, melatonin and uh, thymosin t cells for uh, strengthening the immunity whereas secretes basically it regulates the sleeping duration and strengthen the immunity and it regulates the circadian rhythm bio clock of our body bio clock that involves uh, with the strengthening of the immunity uh, <coughs> and as i told you japanese uh, japanese are worst world least sleepers in the world japanese are least sleepers in the world the longer duration sleepers are indians we are the longest duration of sleeper in spite the japanese are least duration sleepers they are least very less prone for cardiac problems whereas indians are longer duration sleepers but we are more prone more prone for cardiac problems this vice versa their their lifestyle is different they have scheduled the exercise one among the schedule of that so melatonin supplements may cause uh, the following if deformities i can take, take it side effects sleep sleeplessness and drowsiness drowsiness in the morning intense vivid dreams slight increase in the blood pressure slight drop in the body temperature anxiety confusion see if there is a fluctuation in the secretion of uh, melatonin in your from the pineal gland you will face all these problems you will face all these problems when your sleeping is disturbed this when sleeping is disturbed automatically your bio clock will get changed once the bio clock will change the functions of the systems automatically will get modified then you cannot strengthen your system you cannot strengthen your system dear friends the amount of secretion of melatonin at the age of 20 will be half at the age of 60 this is science uh, everybody knows the science people might be knowing at the age of 20 the amount of secretion of melatonin will be half at the age of 60 so only in the complete darkness you can get sufficient amount of melatonin secretion so that you can get uh, uh, sufficient sleeping usually the children they used to sleep for longer duration when compared to aged people very old aged people elderly people they will have only less duration of sleeping since they will get only less duration of uh, secretion of less amount of secretion of melatonin that's why the elderly people are sleeping for lesser duration for longer duration sleeping more amount of melatonin will be secreted during the childhood that's the basic concept in this so if you concentrate on these two glands really actually factual factual concept of these two glands involvement of uh, immunity strengthening immunity see sources for uh, strengthening the immunity by these two glands only way of exercise no other means my dear young friends some of our listening to with this discussion are young friends uh, you take it granted so by knowing the concept basic science these are all basic science so you must involve with physical activity minimum 15 minutes minimum 15 minutes and i have given some of the points for uh, steps to improve immunity also these are all after uh, um, um, laying foundation base for strengthening immunity so you can come across all these uh, uh, parameters which is, uh, improve the immunity system so with these few words 
So I, I make an appeal to all my young students of our country. So dear friends, you are, uh, you don't become liability to your family. If you become liability to your family, that will be a liability to your society. Ultimately, that will become a national liability, a country's liability. So to not to become liability, you involve with physical activity just 15 minutes a day. This 15 minutes a day will will fight, will fight, will come out of any problems uh, uh, like our COVID now, now we are facing. If we have strong immunity, if we have strong willpower, if we have strong mental health, so you can easily come out of these problems. So first you basically we must uh, uh, educate the students, their uh, faculty members, you make this, take it granted, this is our duty. Duty of the teachers, uh, administrators, uh, parents, we must educate them. Once if the awareness is created, they automatically, the youth will involve with the exercise. So my last submission to my young friends, this 15 minutes daily will save you 15 hours, 15 days, 15 weeks, 15 months, even 15 years of her medical life and later stage. So do you want to have a medical life 15 years later stage instead of spending just 15 minutes out of 1,440 minutes in a day, please. So with this discussion, once again, I make an appeal to all my listeners and students, you schedule a day, not only don't schedule for only pandemic period, you schedule your life, you schedule your day, in the schedule, the exercise should be part of uh, part of the schedule. Make it as part and base in your schedule, so that you can lead, you can come out of this uh, pandemic situation. You stay out, stay out of uh, this pandemic situation. You follow uh, the government instruction. Follow the government instruction that is the SMS. Sanitize yourself. Wear mask and uh, keep social distance. That is SMS. So you follow this government instruction by adopting this SMS, we can easily come out of this pandemic. Don't afraid of, don't exit over this. And you educate your parents, your kids, your wards, everybody who are with you, make, we'll make our society, our country free from this uh, COVID-19. With these few words, I thank all the participants uh, for your uh, patience listening for my discussion. And I thank uh, the principal convener and my respected speakers, my for previous speakers from Punjab University, Sukumit Kabur and uh, <coughs> from Malaysia, Dr. Ulik Sandar. I thank everybody for having given, given me this opportunity to interact with the people from Calcutta. So I have friends from Calcutta, still I added some more friends with this interaction from Calcutta. So this will have a future reciprocal with uh, each other. For welfare, of, for welfare of profession as well as our country. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for having given me this opportunity. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for asking us to spend a second minutes per day in order to keep ourselves medically fit and sound. Uh, we have just, uh, I think, time for finishing off with this webinar. And I think uh, it is for now, it is over to Professor Krishna Pantu Thali. Professor K. Thali. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. Koshi. Koshi, present. Koshi. No. I have a question, sir, if you permit me. Professor Gurmit Singh Kapoor. Are you present in my Yes, Dr. Gurmit Singh Kapoor is here, sir. He's present. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, I'm here. If, if you allow me, I can ask one question. Definitely, sir. <laughs> According to our today's discussion, it is clear that our good mental health, good physical health is needed. Yes. On the other hand, if we say good physical health, leads to good mental health would it be true equally sir yeah if that is true recently what happened in mumbai we all know that sushant singh who was physically fit 
so far as we see as we know that he is of good men good physical health in spite of that he committed suicide so there are definitely are some factors related no no yes yes uh, your question is very valid i think he is emotionally unstable emotional emotional part is very important when emotionally stable athlete or emotional person is a fit person but uh, he is emotionally unstable it means fitness doesn't help in, in emotion you, you can see this emotion sometime we are fit because it is our need of the profession you are if you are fitness you are doing fitness only because the actors and the film actors you know that or the professional they are doing fitness to make them present well in the in the big screen you understand this that's why they are doing fitness they are doing fitness because of only to maintain their uh, health in the fitness so that they can show their body over there but the i am talking about regular physical training sometime you have seen that amir khan what he uh, did in um, this um, uh, film dangal he is totally unfit over there because the requirement of they are doing the fitness according to the requirement of the uh, uh, of the cases they are doing according to the what what type of a scene what type of a, um, character is giving to him according to that they are doing they are, they are totally different issue so because mental unstable uh, person emotionally unstable person these are the some different issue but we can handle those who are doing those who are enjoying their activities uh, while uh, doing physical activity they are enjoying not uh, you can say uh, stressfully or uh, without some some burden they are doing uh, some type of physical activity that that will definitely will uh, not be very good uh, for the health if you are enjoying your physical activity then your mental health will also be fit that what i am um, telling you about this okay. thank you let me introduce our president governing body sri subhas dotto i subhas dotto president of the governing body of this prestigious college in west bengal i congratulate and thank to all of you uh, to arrange the first kind of uh, uh, mm uh, 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 we are very grateful to you at this stage of pandemic situation uh, we never we never uh, see but we never face a kind of a kind of situation in my life uh, so only mental strength our uh, will force uh, will force can fight against this pandemic uh, situation as because there is no protection there and man formal medicine sudarang in this circumstances physical exercise as a who develop our mental strength our will force so sudarang man we will win the battle uh, we shall overcome the battle thank you uh, thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you thank you our Uh, honorable principal of the gopadanga hindu college who had a such kind of uh, arrangement in this stage thank you uh, i uh, i heartily heartily mane uh, congratulate the expert of gedia university uh, who uh, participate in this uh, video conference and uh, a seminar i congratulate and 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 hardiest uh, ki bolbo the all of them thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. We, shall, we shall overcome we shall we overcome okay amra bolbo bhai amra bolbo bhai thank you thank you thank you we shall overcome 
Continue, continue. Kishnagant sir, continue. Kishnagant continue. Hello, yes. Uh, it is a, a very good piece of advice come what we repeatedly have understood to be Amra Korbojai, we shall overcome. Uh, certainly we hope to overcome all the hurdles and all the boundaries and all the crisis that we are facing, especially for the young generation. We really look forward to every day, every moment when we shall be able to go back to our good old days. So I don't think we have any more questions. I ask the principal if we shall proceed with the next part of the valedictory. Ma'am, uh, ma uh, I have a question, ma'am. Obhijit Kaur has a question, okay? May I? Yes, very quickly. Uh, ma'am, uh, you know that in the pandemic situation, so yes. many negative things or anxiety comes in our mind. At that point of view, can mental health affect on the physical health and how? Okay, uh, so would you like would you like this question to be answered by Dr. Murugavan? Yes, uh, no, uh, 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 Dr. Um, good okay, 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 good. Uh, Alexander, sir, I don't know if he's here. If he's here, he should okay. be able to answer. Okay, Abhi. Yes, okay, uh, I think Alexander is here. Thank you, sir. There is a question for you in which a participant wishes to ask if the question of mental anxiety, especially during the period of lockdown and crisis, is really responsible for affecting our mental health and thereby our physical health too. This is the question put forward by one participant. How no, affect uh, mental health? Mental health, how affect to the physical health? Right. Right. Okay. Thank you for the question and uh, thank you for addressing it to me. Uh, you see, uh, there is always a uh, very complicated relationship between physical, mental, uh, social, emotional component of life. And definitely, we all use to certain uh, opportunities and certain uh, available opportunities to actually channelize every sort of energy uh, in the daily life. And as you know, we all are used to uh, get physical whenever it is required, get emotional whenever it is required, get social and communicate socially, and so on and so forth. So the lockdown as such is not, uh, or a COVID pandemic is not a source of our problem. The problem is in the limited communication and in the actual lockdown in the physical sense. So that is how uh, mental health getting affected, uh, but it is not because of uh, physical or social component. There is an anxiety, like you rightly said, involved. And that anxiety is, uh, unfortunately, uh, will stay with us for a while. Because I'm noticing that uh, even when the, the rules or regulations get eased, people still try avoiding contact. And they are kind of getting fearful sometimes. And they are uh, the ones who are particularly concerned about their health that uh, physical contact becomes a, an issue. However, it is all kind of manageable. And uh, uh, India that way is a perfect place uh, by location and by kind of history, whereby you have unlimited access to uh, meditation specialists, yoga specialists, breathing specialists, People who are actually capable of, of advising on a very specific manner how to tackle that anxiety. And it may not necessarily be physical involvement. It could be, as uh, was discussed today, 
It could be through breathing exercises. It could be through meditation. It could be through poetry. It could be through anything on earth. Uh, and uh, I repeat, India is a blessed place uh, in that way that you are culturally such a huge nation and uh, you can actually tackle it uh, from very various angles. And uh, physical is just one of them. And that's what we are discussing today. Again, uh, uh, gratitude expressed to the principal and the convener and uh, to the whole idea of raising that issue. So we are contributing a small uh, kind of piece of evidence or a small piece of advice to that big, big, huge mosaic in which there are like crores of different pieces which we can just only imagine in a small fraction. And uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for being there with us from the very first minute of the webinar. Thank you so much. Uh, I would request Professor K.K. Jhali to please conclude. Good evening, good evening, everybody. I hope all are fine. Though this is a regular protocol, yet it gives me great joy to thank all those who supported this event. Thanks are due to the Honorable BC, Netaji Shubash Open University, Professor Shubha Shankar Sharkar, but he may not present an emergent reason. Thanks to our GP president, Sri Shubash Dutto, and our, our principal, Dr. Hare Krishna Mandal, who has inspired us to think differently. A special thanks due to Professor Gurmit Singh Kapoor, chairman, uh, chairperson, and Professor Physical Education Department, Punjab University, Professor Alexander uh, uh, Krasilisikov, University Saint in uh, Malaysia, and Professor K. Murgavil, Director, and uh, Professor Bharatiya University, Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. A big thanks to all the participants. A special word of thanks to the members of our governing body and to our teachers for their participation. Thanks due to the members of the faculty of physical education department, to the department of computer science, and to Sri Arno Bhomik for extending their support. Thank you once again. Thank you. Or to principal, sir. Sir Alexander, sir, are you hearing me? Alex, Alexander, sir. Yes, sir. I can hear you well. Everybody, everybody is feeling difficulty to pronounce your last part of the name. I'm yeah, used to it. it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm okay with that. What uh, you, you, can, you can you can just you can just pronounce Alex. That's it. Alex. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for being here. And uh, I hope see you again in any means, in any way. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it is a request to all the participants yeah. that the feedback form has been provided. The link to the feedback form has been provided in the chat inbox. Kindly fill it in by 6 p.m. today. And accordingly, you will receive your certificates. A request to all the participants, please. No Dasvidaniya. extra time will be provided. Das Vidanya to Alex. Das Vidanya. Bye-bye. Yeah. So we are speaking. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Now, Alex sir, Gurmit sir, and um, uh, Morugamil sir, according to our president, we shall overcome. Is it possible to say one line collectively for us? Is it possible? Uh, Yes, yes, it is uh, um, wonderful uh, and uh, uh, you can say very um, effective uh, uh, your webinar for this college and okay. college have taken this initiative. I'm very happy about it. Uh, we shall overcome. Is it possible to sing uh, two, one or two lines according to our president? 
President said we shall overcome today or tomorrow. So is it possible to sing Maruga Bhansar? Let's have a chorus for two lines only. Maruga Bhansar. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, you will start. Yeah. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. A famous song, famous song. Two lines. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if you 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 do we follow? Okay. Oh, I I do you follow? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We shall overcome. Uh, <laughs> I'm not that good at singing. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we shall overcome. Good sir. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone. Thank you very much. Murugavil, sir. Murugavil, sir. Murugavil, sir. Murugavil, sir has left. No, actually. No, no, no. I'm going to go. Oh. Good sir, thank you, thank you. Good sir, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, okay. We are leaving now. Okay. Paramita. Paramita. Yes. Thank you to Paramita. Paramita. Okay, thank you. Thank you to you also. Okay. Okay, we are leaving. Okay. <laughs>